My lab, broadly speaking, is interested in trying to understand interactions between cells and materials, and those could be materials that are present within living tissue or materials that we use for engineering purposes uh, to try to do something of technological or therapeutic interest. In cancer, it's becoming clear in many systems that changes in tissue mechanics can help to guide uh, or uh, influence tumor progression. And in the case of brain cancer, especially in glioblastoma, which is the tumor that we study most uh, heavily in my lab, uh, the reason that this has such a poor prognosis and ultimately kills patients is because the tumors spread uh, in very uh, aggressive ways within brain tissue. And the way they do that is, is very specific. So often tumor cells will uh, home towards very stiff structures within the brain, including blood vessels, and use those as contact guidance cues or, if you like, highways of a sort. Uh, to infiltrate tissue. And the thinking is that maybe these changes in mechanics may be important in helping to uh, promote uh, or, or drive uh, the invasion process. And so, uh, again, it raises this uh, possibility that maybe if we can identify how uh, this recognition process works, we might be able to develop a completely new set of druggable targets uh, to, to try to arrest the invasion process. AFM is very important to us because it uh, provides the quantitative means to measure the viscoelastic properties of materials that we culture cells on, materials that we make for various purposes, uh, as well as living cells and tissues. Uh, it's one of the, the few technologies that can really take those kinds of measurements with, with actual living tissue. So atomic force microscopy is capable of going where other techniques are not able to go uh, in characterizing dynamics of biomolecules. Uh, under aqueous conditions, that is, in, in water, uh, which is where life occurs, and more recently, um, doing this very, very quickly. So we're able to observe dynamic uh, processes, uh, like molecular motors, uh, walking alongside of skeletal filaments in, in ways that are simply not possible with other imaging technologies. Uh, and then finally, AFM has uh, helped us to understand the forces that are involved in controlling um, structure within proteins and DNA. So this has really added a great deal to our basic understanding of how proteins assemble, fold, and, and, give, and, and ultimately um, create functional structures. One major contribution that Bruker has made is trying to integrate atomic force microscopy technology with other types of uh, technologies that are, that are uh, valued by life scientists. And I, I'd love to see even more progress in that direction from Bruker and other AFM manufacturers. So, uh, trying to figure out how to integrate AFM measurements with uh, biochemical measurements or genetic measurements that are uh, pushing life sciences forward in other areas, uh, trying to make these measurements more high throughput uh, for the purpose of um, incorporating them into the drug screening and discovery uh, pipeline. I think historically one limitation with atomic force microscopy is that while it's a very high resolution, sometimes setting up an experiment is not trivial, data acquisition can take a very long time. So anything that can be done to try to bring it uh, up to speed in that, those regards with other technologies I think would be a major advance and I'd love to see the field uh, go in that direction.